Happy New Year and welcome back to Vinyl Anatomy. For 2024, I want to start New Year by improving my trusted turntable LP120 USB. Because of its popularity, it is natural that we find ways to modify it for better performance. And today I want to show you the most famous mod of the LP120, which is to bypass the phono preamp module. It takes away the function of ripping the vinyl record directly from the turntable gives you a cleaner, more transparent signal in return. If you're not sure about this mod, I would recommend you go through two videos about this mod, one by Vinyl TV and the other by Tech Tangents for a more technical and scientific discussion. What I can provide here is a clear visual guide for you and what is my thought about this mod and hopefully helps you to decide if this is the right mod for you. First, we want to disassemble the turntable, starting by taking out the parts that can be damaged in the process, like the cover, 78 adapter and cartridge, locking down the arm and removing the counterweight and platter. The cover is a great platform for the operation, but be gentle with it. Now we want to locate 8 screws with arrow marks. After removing them, we can open up the chassis. There are 8 small spacers for each screw, don't lose them. Now we have a clean look for everything. Top left is our torn arm. The bottom left is the main board for the turntable, which controls the speed and such. The top is the preamp and USB interface. The center is the motor. The upper right is the power supply. And below seems to be the power control board. The bottom right is the power switch. The main area we're touching today is on the main board and preamp board. The cable from the torn arm goes through the top of the main board and then connects to the preamp. I first unscrew the cable clips to free the RCA. And here is a closer look at how the RCA goes up to the preamp and a closer look at the connection. Now we're going to unscrew 5 screws to loosen the preamp board. Unplug the preamp power plug and we need to cut the ground, which is the only cutting for the mod. After that, the only thing stopping us from ripping out the board are the RCA cables. To lose the RCA cable, we need to unsolder them. Any basic soldering tool will work at the temperature around 300 degrees Celsius. My solder tip here is at the end of its life, don't be like me, use a good conditional one. Because all the cables inside are really thin, if the iron is too hot or contacting too long can cause the wire skin to melt. I desolder each cable one by one. One thing to be mindful is to not letting the melted solder touch each other, which will short the connection. After releasing the RCA cables, we can remove the whole preamp board and I can finally use this MIM. I bypassed the compressor. 
Before we solder the new RCAs, there is an optional mod you can do. Between the left and right channel negative, there is a jumper, shorted them and join the two together. If you are like me wanting a true separated left and right, this is the time to desolder it. Same with the RCA connections. Heat it up with the soldering iron and then it should be easy to push it out from your signal pass. Now we can move on to solder the new RCAs. I got this nice pigtail female RCA on good old Amazon. They are all have C cables and thicker in diameter compared to the original one. And here is where a lot of the variations of this mod come from. Some people want to mount their RCA ports onto the chassis and take out dangling cables. Some people want to reuse the original cable. And I want the female jacks but don't want to drill holes in the chassis. Take whatever message that suits you. Now I start to solder back the cables. And here is a diagram of how the solder points line up with the cartridge signal. Audio Technica is using the standard color coding of its cartridge. The red is the right channel, the white is the left channel, the green is for the negative right, and the blue is for the negative left. During the soldering, I realized my new RCA cable skin does not like the high temperature and one of them slightly melted. I protected it with some electrical tape after. If you want to use the Pictel RCA like me, be very careful with your soldering iron. After soldering back the RCA, there is still one more step. Because we had to cut the ground on the preamp board, our tone arm loses its ground. If we do not add a new ground, we'll get strong interference. On all the different methods I saw, I prefer Tech Tangent's method, where he added a ground cable onto the shielding of the tone arm, separating both the signal and ground from everything else in the turntable, making the modded LP120 way closer to how a higher end turntable should be. I use some 18 gauge cable with a white connector as the ground, then I connect it with the building. After we settle the ground, the mod is done. All we left here was to organize the cable and to reassemble the chassis. I added a cable clip here because the secret RCA cable no longer fits with the original clip. It's not a perfect strain reliever like the clip, but it will do it for now. Then I screw back most pieces one by one. If you use my method, be sure you pull the two RCAs and the ground cable out fully. Behind the camera, I had to do it multiple times to clear all the cables. After setting the chassis, we can put back those spacers to the designated holes and put back all the screws. Then we reassemble parts like the platters, mat, cartridge, counterweight, and finally the cover. Now we can enjoy the modded LP120. By doing this mod, we lose the ability to rip the vinyl record directly from the turntable. But if you watch those videos I recommended, you should know that the preamp module is not very good. Components on the signal pass actually mask out a certain range of the frequency, so much so that it can change the tone of instruments in playback. I recorded some clips before I did the mod, and after I recorded the modded clips, I will post a separate video as a reference. From my experience living with the modded LP120, I can say the sonic performance has improved tremendously. There are several aspects I noticed. One, you get more volume from the turntable. Although different records can have different volumes, I found that before the mod, I often had to turn my receiver to around 48 for a decent value. But now I can find myself playing at around 44 to reach a similar volume from before. Great. And next, for some records, especially modern ones that I found muffling or too dark and lacking highs, the modded LB120 brings back some of those missing ranges, making it closer to the intended sound. They are still different from the digital file, but way more enjoyable. This also surprised me how much the preamp board masks out. Lastly, by cleaning up the signal pass, we can now know exactly how each cartridge sounds without interference. This brings the LP120 closer to other high-end tables and won't be the weakest link in your system. This is my thought of the LP120 preamp mod. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If my contents help your journey or provides you with some entertainment, please like, subscribe, and ring the bells. It means a lot to the channel. That's all I have for today. We'll see you next time.